All right, I've recorded this video too many times already, and I keep ranting for the longest time. So I'm going to try to get this done in one go, and my goal is to have it like less than 15 minutes. So in this video, I want to talk about Dinar, the new Dinar system, which is going to be called Ancient Bronze Bullions. And from probably the rest of the video, I'm going to call them Bullions if I don't have a brain fart. So I want to talk about the order you're going to buy things in and some of the standout items. You can see my bags are kind of messy because I was kind of playing around mentally just trying to figure out how to categorize these, which won't make sense because they're all over the place. So there's a couple things that we know about the new system, and there's a couple things that are still a little bit of a mystery. We don't know the exact acquisition. We do know that they're going to come from the Mythic Plus quests. Presumably, they're going to come from Raid. Now, I'm going to go off of the kind of the Dinar system back from season or Shadowlands season four, where I'm going to under, I'm going to lowball it and say we're only going to have three from Raid and then a couple from Mythic Plus, which if we look at the calendar, again, I know calendars are susceptible to change, but we're going to have a Mythic Plus weekend, or the week, I should say, on the second reset, or I guess third reset. Season comes out, we have to wait two full weeks, and then that third week, we're going to have access to a Dragonflight Dungeon event. So that's going to be two bullions there. And then, again, I think it's like end of July. Actually, we're seeing one here. Dragonflight Dungeon event is on the 18th of June. And then we're going to see one at the very end of July. So let's take the assumption that we're going to get three from the raid quest, might be more, and we're going to get three from Mythic Dungeons over the next two months. So I want to talk about the items I would buy, some standout items for more like niche scenarios, and like generally the order that I'm going to buy them in and walk you through my thought process, because obviously this is PTR, the patch comes out in like two and a half weeks now, uh, from now. And things are obviously subject to change. They can always tune shrinkets and tune items either up or down. Um, and then the other big thing is during the actual patch, the order of the raids are going to determine what items we might buy or might not buy. And same with um, and same with like your luck, right? You could you could be raiding and you you might be after like let's say Firex tainted rage heart. Amir still comes out in like three weeks, and it drops and you roll on it, and it's like okay now I don't need to spend dinar on Firex Tainted Rage Heart because I just got it to drop. You know, there's things like that. It could drop from your vault. So there's a lot of these like different factors that can take, could have a play in your decision making. But generally speaking, these are the items that I'm going to be aiming for, uh, for Mythic Plus. For those who don't know, uh, I'm primarily, I'm a Mythic Plus player. I don't really care to raid. I raid for gear if I need it. And um, yeah, so everything I'm going to talk about is primarily focused on Mythic Plus. Couple standout items and my voice just cracked. That's awesome. There's a couple of standout items from each raid. Let's kind of walk through it, I guess. So first raid, the big takeaways from Vault of the Incarnates is going to be Whispering Incarnate Icon, both of the rare rings, so that's three items, and then um, you can make the arguments for maybe something like Spiteful Storm or Controlled Technique or like Decoration of Flame, but I'll kind of elaborate here. So... I would say the best items from this raid are going to be those rings and Whispering Incarnate Icon. Icon, I've heard from sources that it's right now giving more secondary sets than it's supposed to, but under the pretense that it's giving the the amount it should be giving, it's a very strong, uh, it's a great stat stick. It technically buffs your allies who are also running Icon. The versatility that it gives to a tank is about 8%, which is 8% increased damage. It's 4% reduced damage taken. So generally speaking, Icon, probably going to be your first trinket that you'd like to aim for if you're looking for a stat stick and you're looking for Vault of the Incarnates. My kind of drawback here is it comes from the second boss, which is going to be farmable on normal, heroic, and arguably mythic very early on. So I would try to kill the boss before buying this. It wouldn't be the first thing I would buy. The rings are very good, but same thing as Whip Whispering Icon. Same thing as the Icon. Seal of Druna Chosen comes from Aranog. Decoration of Flame comes from Aranog. Both of these items have a high level of accessibility to most players. The first Mythic boss is pretty easy even in pre-mades. Uh, heroic and Normal, it's pretty much just a target dummy with a couple of adds that spawn. Would I buy this first? Probably not. What's nice about this ring is that it's very good stats for the Brewmaster, and the you're not losing secondary stats or main stat because rings don't give main stat. And you're gaining a weapon, uh, or a, basically a proc effect. This is going to net you anywhere between one to two percent damage in single or in, in AOE and over the course of a dungeon. So, very strong. Don't recommend buying it first, though. And then lastly, we have Seal of Flyle Duty. This I would buy very quickly. 
if you don't have access to the late bosses, so this does come from Broodkeeper. It's a penultimate boss. It's boss seven of the raid. Yeah, there's eight bosses. So it's set boss seven. And the amount of the amount of healing this is going to provide you over the course of a key is very, very high. I've had a few people make comments about we didn't run this in season one because of secondary stats. Like, what changed? What changed is that uh, because of how bloated secondary stats are now, our critical strike is well above 30%, which means we've already hit our first DR. A lot of us are probably hitting around that 39% mark, which is the second diminishing return, meaning that critical strike is now going to start giving you probably 20% less value per point compared to any other stat. Uh, same with versatility. Versatility, most of us are probably around the 30% mark, if not higher, especially if you're running Incarnate Icon. You can see my versatility right now is at 40% because I'm running Icon plus Spherex Tainted Rage Heart. So because of that, Mastery is the next stat that gives you the most value. And it does it for a few reasons. It obviously gives you attack power. It increases your frequency to dodge. That's a little bit more minor. Uh, but the big thing is that it has a really cool interaction. Not cool interaction. It just it amplifies your tier set based off of the Celestial Brew usage. For those who don't know, the, the modifier on Celestial Brew is actually based off of attack power, which comes from mastery. So more mastery means more, more larger Celestial Brews per use. So it's going to generally give you a lot more healing. Yes, it gives haste. But haste and single target isn't a bad thing, and we're not getting haste from pretty much any other item on our character, so having that extra little bit of haste from the ring is actually not a bad thing to, to have. There's a couple of other items from Vault of the Incarnates that end up being good in single target specifically, but if we're looking at just Mythic Plus, I don't recommend getting anything. Spiteful Storm does a lot of good single target damage on prolonged single target en encounters, and controlled current technique, very good because of the amount of critical strike we now have, it's really good for two target cleave encounters, so specifically things like Kurog on Mythic. Probably a very good fight. There's obviously some other fights here and there that are going to be pretty beneficial to be running this trinket, but again, it's not something that I would personally buy or recommend, unless you find yourself in a situation where you have all the items you have, uh, or that you want, and you have a couple of extra bullions laying around. Outside of that, that's really all I would say from the first raid here. So let's put this in my bag somewhere. Um, we're going to put the two rings plus icon right here. Um, everything else I would pretty much ignore. Okay, so these would be, the order I would buy them in would look something more like this. I would go Fly All Duty because of the access of it and the value that it's providing you for being in a ring slot. Whispering Incarnate Icon in the second slot, and Seal of Druin is chosen in that, in that third slot. Now again, this isn't the ac actual order, this is what I would probably recommend from that raid in particular. So we can now look at Abaris. This video is going to be way longer than 15 minutes. Couple of good items here that I would recommend, but nothing I would actually, like, write home about. There's nothing very defensive-based that I would recommend getting from here. If you're looking for single-target damage, you can make the argument for Beacon. Um, Neltharian's called the Dominance. If you're a Windwalker player, it's also not a bad option. If you don't play a lot of Windwalker, I don't recommend getting Call of Dominance, like, ever. It's... it. Makes our Naizawa very powerful cooldown, but Naizawa doesn't line up with anything. Naizawa itself is very weak, so it's just not a great trinket to have. Voice of the Silent Star, while it can be good for damage, especially if you do play things like Windwalker or even Mistweaver for, like, throughput, um, you're going to lose so much health, which Brewmasters already have a low amount of health. Probably not just, probably not worth running. Uh, it does give high crit, low haste. Not the worst stats in the world, but I just think there's, there's going to be better options for you to buy. The only thing that I would really recommend getting from here would be single target, maybe anvil. Dijarun is a good weapon, but again, the weapon aspect of this system is something that I would wait on because you could get lucky. Actually, I'll, you know, I'll come back to weapons because weapons are a different topic altogether. For pure damage, Dragonfire Bomb Dispenser does a ton. You're going to macro this into Keg Smash. You have high amount of critical strike on your character. So your Rushing Jade Wind, your Spinning Crane Kick, your, your Dot Ticks, and pretty much any ability you use is going to be frequently critting, so you're getting tons of resets on this. So you macro it into Keg Smash, and you just keep smashing your buttons, and you're going to get 6-ish, six, 6-7% six to damage in the course of a key, depending on, of course, other factors. But generally speaking, you know, anywhere between 5 and 7% damage from Bomb Dispenser. Um, and then Ward of Faceless Ire, this is kind of a an honorable mention because it was reduced uh, significantly in terms of cooldown. The value of it in a Mythic Plus key is a lot higher than it looks, so it is reading on paper 400k damage. It's, it's an Absorb Shield. It seems very low. When I was testing it in Algothar Academy at 499 item level, which is significantly lower than what we're going to be, it was giving me about an 800k Absorb. That 800k Absorb doesn't have to be used on yourself. It could be 
put onto an ally. So in high-end progression keys, there are a lot of mechanics that could be one-shotty. If your DPS are out of out of defensives, or you're in a high enough tyrannical key where just abilities start to one-shot and you have to have a DR for your group, not a bad option for a tank. Uh, a lot of times in especially Brewmaster specifically, you very rarely will need a defensive trinket for a boss fight. Stagger is already so broken by itself that you can sacrifice uh, this. You can use it on yourself too, but you can give it to an ally during a boss fight and keep them alive. So I wouldn't count this out, but I wouldn't recommend buying it even close to first. The only item I would actually buy from this is maybe Dejarun if you really want to fast track a weapon, or you'd go Bomb Dispenser. So let's put those items, I'll put these items right here. This is all I would ever actually buy recommend getting from this and that's only if you want damage versus um like a damage trinket versus like just another unused weapon okay let's move over to the last ray this is a mirror sill this is the one that we just ended up running not a whole lot of standouts here but it's probably going to lead me into my weapon talk the biggest item or i guess the two biggest items that are takes away uh that i would take away from this is fear extended ray chart very very powerful item it does it doesn't give main stat but again, main set isn't super important at this at this late in a patch for a tank. We already have a ton of main set already. We have a ton of secondary stats. And really, these effects are going to be what's the most important. This item does so much healing. For anyone who ran it in Season 3, you will you probably can't imagine playing without it now. For those who haven't gotten lucky and haven't gotten it, you're definitely missing out. But luckily, you're going to have access to be able to just purchase it and have that your own little bad luck protection. Augury is also a very good damage trinket. It doesn't give main set. It gives crits. But the amount of damage it's going to do every time it procs is close to 800k, at least from my testing. And it's going to proc pretty frequently. And again, it's going to give you a ton of crit, which does have some defensive value to it. Um, you're going to be gaining a lot of value from the Celestial Fortune effect. Everything else is pretty bad. I don't recommend, like, Cataclysmic Signet, Signet brand. Kind of ass. Ember Soul, probably good for Windwalker, not great for Brewmaster. Pips, if you're going to look at a stat stick, you're going to look at Icon. It's just a given. Gift of Ursine Vengeance, very weak. It has a very just strange effect with it as well. Bandolier of Twisted Blades, again, it's all about accessibility. Agira is very easy to kill on most difficulties. It's a little bit of a wall on Mythic, but again, we don't know what the tuning is going to look like for Agira. Uh, going into Season, we don't know if we're getting affixes again. They haven't really mentioned that. Maybe I'm wrong, but Bandolier is pretty accessible. Same with Volkros. This necklace... It's great. It's not going to provide you a ton of healing, though, over the course of a key. It's it's sometimes only like 0.3% of my overall healing, so it's very niche. The only thing that I would say about the Orboreal Necklet is that it has very good secondary stats on it, but you can craft a necklace with guaranteed stats. There's also the Tuscar Bone Necklace from Brackenide Hollow, which has high crit, lower verse, but they're about equal. So there's, there's just good necklaces out there that you can farm, so spending, spending the currency to get this necklace... It's just not great. Volkros is pretty easy to access. It the effect of it is minor at best, and there's again you can you can infinitely farm Brackenhide Hollow. Whether, well, if you don't like Brackenhide, I maybe not. But um, okay, let's talk about weapons really quick because this is where I think things get a little bit more tricky. So like I mentioned already, you have Dejarun. You also have Rashan coming from uh, the Amir Sil raid. Very strong item, but with the secondary stats that it has on it, I don't like it as much because it's high haste, low verse. The proc is great for, you know, boss fights or from like early on on pulls, but because it does single target damage on AoE, that's a that's another factor for Mythic Plus. Um, you're going to be missing out on having two weapons enchants where you can only run one now if you're running Rashan. So if I had a choice for weapons, this is what I would recommend. Don't prioritize weapons right off the bat. What I would recommend doing early on in the season is farming for Forge Storm. Yes, I understand Force Storm doesn't give main stat, but the weapon effect from it, I think, justifies not having the main stat on there. You run Forge Storm, it gives crit and haste. Yes, haste is a little bad, but the, the the amount of damage it deals in single target and AoE, I think, vastly trumps both Rashan and Dejarun. And then you can run Thorncaller's Claw. This does give a little bit of main stat. It's about half the value, same with secondary stats. It gives haste and verse. Not super great, but again doesn't matter as much in this situation, and the damage it provides is very, very, very high. It's also a smart dot where it'll apply a dot, but if that mob dies, it'll transfer to a new, you know, nearby mob. Super beneficial. This has so far been my most successful setup through testing keys on PTR. I've tested Rashans, I've tested Dejarun. I find that this setup gives, generally speaking, way more damage overall in the course of a key than the other two setups. Now, if you prefer getting a weapon early on, buy Dejarun or buy Rashan. Again, the 
the total damage you're going to be gaining or missing out on by running any of these setups is is minimal it really it's this is for more like min maxing but this setup is very very strong so in terms of priority it really depends right so if you can't get forge storm to drop obviously it might be better to then dump something into like dejarun or rashan i would prefer dejarun over fear x tainted rage heart if you get a forge storm i would then knock this up i would buy thorn collar so the order that i would buy these in once let, okay under the assumption that we're getting six right we talked about raid we talked about the mythic plus reward let's say we can only buy six items let me move these to the side so i can visually show you in my bags the order that i would buy these in given the fact that i'm gonna get super unlucky and not a single item actually drops in raid that is for that i that i win because currently i don't have a guild that i'm running with i just stopped raiding i stopped i left my guild the first thing I would personally buy would be Firax Tainted Rage Heart. Very powerful defensive trinket. Very. It also does a ton of damage over the course of a over the course of a key. It does good single target damage. It does good AOE damage from the pulsating um, profile. This would be the first thing I buy. I don't. I'm, again, I'm not sure how quickly we're going to be able to gain bullions. I would imagine we're probably not going to gain our first bullion until after we see all three raids. But if that's the case, I would buy Firax Tainted Rage Heart first, assuming that I don't get it to drop. Secondly, depending on if I can get a Forge Storm or not, I would then buy Thorncaller's Claw. So this would be my first buy. This would be my second buy. Let's move these up a little bit. That's only if I can actually get the Forge Storm to drop. If I can't, I might do this in a slightly different order. The next thing I would buy would be fairly dependent on what I already have access to. Now, I didn't talk about this in this video, and I probably won't talk about it in uh, specifics. But there are a couple of really good dungeon trinkets that are going to be dropping from this next season. And that's going to include Resonator, Enduring Scale, and Prophetic Stone Scales. Prophetic Stone Scales is a little bit more niche because it's not going to be in the Mythic Plus pool anymore. So you actually have to farm Mythic Zero for it. I have a Mythic one in my bags from this from Season 3 that I can always use if I need it. But I'm going to be looking to farm one of these two items to get it. Once I have a second defensive trinket that also does damage, I'm going to feel pretty confident in my ability to then start kind of focusing on more like nuanced items so my third buy would probably be seal of file filial duty and the reason why is because of access like i said before seal of drone is chosen is from the first boss i don't think i necessarily would want to spend the currency that's limited arguably limited that we know of to um, a boss that i can farm on normal heroic and mythic not farm but i can kill it's very easy to access that boss. If I end up getting Thorncaller, I don't really care about Dejaru or Rashan anymore. You could end up buying this if you really want to, but I would then focus on some of these other items. So you have things like, obviously, Druun is Chosen. At this point in the patch, I might buy it just because I eventually want it so I can stop raiding. And then after that, I would buy something like Augury and Bomb Dispenser, with Icon kind of being like... It's more of like a wild card for Icon. I think Icon is really good. Again, I've, I've heard that the value of the secondary set that it's giving, the versatility, is a little bit high. And it's supposed to be giving less stats. Again, I don't know if that's true or not, but I've I've heard that from a lot of sources. Because I don't know if the trinket's going to be nerfed. I don't know if the people in my group are also going to be running it. Chances are they probably will. It's a very strong trinket. Uh, you could buy this to amplify your secondary stats. But again, I think it's a little bit too boring for tanks. I like having options like this, which are either a DR, an Absorb, and a little bit more damage compared to Icon, which is just very stale to me. If I end up using these trinkets, I might not buy Bomb Dispenser because I find Bomb Dispenser a little clunky. It does do a ton of damage in keys, but it's just like, because you're constantly using it because of the cooldown reduction you're getting, it makes using some other trinkets a little bit difficult because it's going to set, it's going to put things on cooldown. So I would... Um, I might not buy Bomb Dispenser for Icon instead. I might not buy Augury and buy Icon. So it's basically the first four items I'm going to buy are pretty much set in stone. It's going to be Firak, Weapon, doesn't matter which weapon it is. Maybe I can do that here. You're going to buy a weapon, doesn't matter. And then you're going to buy Rings. After that, it's really up in the air. If we're getting a ton of different, if we're getting a ton of Boleons over the course of the patch, buy whatever, man. <laughs> like, there's some really good trinkets in this pool. Um, like Storm Eater's Boon, insanely fun. Difficult to use, but it's very fun to go in like the first pull of Algothar and as a tank player, whipping out like 1 million plus DPS for like 30 seconds. It's very fun to do that. Um, 
Things like single target, beacon is really fun. Prolonged single target encounter, spiteful storm is really good. There's a couple of trinkets that I would maybe steer away from. Some of the stat sticks, you know, these types of trinkets, I don't recommend. Alto to master, I've just never been a fan of. Ward is a little bit more nuanced and niche. Controlled current, solid for single target. Again, if you're a Windwalker player as well, Neltharian's Call the Dominance, very cool. But generally speaking, the order, again, just want to recap this. Tainted Heart, Thorncaller's Claw, or any of the weapons. It's really up to you. And then the rings. That would be my order, and then everything else is more or less wild card. Depends on the player, depends on preference. Um, you might have been unlucky. You might have not gotten a trinket to drop in a specific amount of time. So maybe you want to pick up a damage trinket. Maybe you have gotten lucky. Maybe you do want to pick up the Ouroboreal Necklet. That's fine too. But generally speaking, I think the first four might be as a, a lock-in from, from my perspective. Anyways, I'm already ranting. This this recording is 22 minutes, so I'm going to cut that here. Uh, probably cut out a little bit of stuff. But anyways, massive shout out to my Patreon supporters and Twitch subscribers. Without you guys, uh, there'd be a lot less of this. There's going to be a couple of videos coming out in the near future regarding uh, more Brewmaster stuff. I'm going to be starting to test a lot of the other tanks as well. I don't know if I'll do boss guides like I have in the past, but I, I'll be doing route videos. I'll be doing walkthroughs. I'm going to, I'm, my plan is to start churning out content pretty quickly here. So uh, stay tuned for that. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.